Hi, this is Ahed with Logos Learning, and in this video, we're going to do the ATP count of cellular respiration per one glucose molecule. Now, let's look at an overview of this process. This is also presented in my first video, which is called the Cellular Respiration Overview. Now, glucose goes through glycolysis to produce two pyruvates. In this process, two NADHs are produced. These are electron carriers, and two ATPs are produced, two net ATPs. The pyruvates then go through the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex in the mitochondrial matrix to produce two acetyl-CoA units. Now, this process produces two NADHs per glucose. The acetyl-CoAs then go through the Krebs cycle in the mitochondrial matrix as well. This process produces two ATPs per glucose, six NADHs, and two FADH2s. Now, these electron carriers, I likened them earlier to checks. They are not really useful right at the beginning, like ATP. They are not useful. They have to go into the electron transfer chain to be cached or to use their energy to make ATP. So think of ATP as our cache and these electron carriers, the NADH and FADH2s, as our checks. They have to go to the bank, which is the electron transfer chain, to be cached out. Now, this picture shows you the electron transfer chain. And again, view my other video about this to get a more detailed description. The NADH and the NADHs and the FADH2s go to these proteins on the inner mitochondrial membrane and they get oxidized. So they go from NADH, and I keep erasing my stuff, they go from NADH to NAD+. So they're getting oxidized and in this process, a lot of protons are being pumped out. Here, this NADH produces or causes the pumping out of 10 protons. And the FADH2s, they get oxidized at the second complex, or the second protein in this chain, and it leads to the production of six protons, or not the production, but the pumping out to be more specific. And earlier I said that you need three protons to go through ATP synthase to produce the ATP. Now, let's go here and do the count. So if you have a good memory, if you remember, uh, glycolysis produces two ATPs at substrate level phosphorylation, direct cache. PDC produces no ATP. Krebs cycle produces two ATPs, and all, this, all that is per glucose. Glycolysis produces two NADHs, PDC, two NADHs, and the Krebs cycle produces six NADH and two FADH2s. And again, that is the count per glucose, not per um, acetyl-CoA. <clears throat> now, we said earlier that each NADH leads to the pumping out of 10 protons. I'm going to write 10 protons here. You need three protons to make an ATP. So this is around three ATPs. That's its value. The FADH2 leads to the pumping out of six protons, and therefore it makes two ATPs, theoretically. All right? Now, there's one more thing I have to tell you. The NADH that's made from glycolysis, so the glycolytic NADH, so the NADHs are made in glycolysis, they go and get oxidized at the same place as the FADH2, at the second complex. So they also lead to the pumping out of only six protons, which makes two ATPs. Okay? Now let's do the count then. Two NADHs from glycolysis. Each NADH makes two ATPs. So we have here, we're going to, two ATPs, so this is four ATPs. The NADHs from the PDC are these NADHs. They make three ATP each. We have two of them. That's six ATPs. Now, we have the six NADHs from the Krebs cycle. Each makes three. Three times six is, you did it, yes, 18 ATP. And the two FADH2s, they make two ATPs each. Oh, did I make a mistake? Um, six times three, no, I did not. Okay, perfect. 
and uh, the two ATP the FADH2s make two ATP, so we have two of them, so that is four ATP. Let's do the count. Two plus two, four, plus four, eight, plus six, twelve, plus eighteen, thirty, plus four, thirty-four. So here we have thirty-four ATPs, oh, thirty-four ATPs per molecule of glucose. Thirty-four ATP. Theoretically, this is theoretical. Okay, I hope that this video helped. And if you like these videos and you like the other videos, please subscribe to my channel so that you may receive more videos. Have a nice day. Bye bye.